scheme wise they have been in a better position to allow for that and to have success protecting the quarterback and running the football. They've been dynamic and violent and that's dominant. This crowd's ready to go Friday night football in Eugene Oregon. it goes he is 37 and 16 as a starter in college football Dylan Gabriel as accurate as anybody other than Jared Goff he's just intentional as well you'll see it with his feet you'll see it with his eyes and his decision making he's got such a plan that comes with being five years as a starter and it's one thing to have all of that experience but it's another thing to bring it to life on game day, and he does. How does he do that? What are we watching? Yeah, today? just the poise, and just, again, the ball is out of his hands so quickly. Terrence Ferguson, the tight end, who's been outstanding once again in motion there. Gabriel to throw on the first play. It's a shot down the middle of the field. Tells Johnson it is incomplete. Malik Spencer was back there waving his finger on the coverage. No penalty marker out. This was something they worked on all week long. You open a game with a shot, and there's just enough little contact there to distract him. Ooh. A little surprise. You can see the back judge. He is looking right at him. Typically, when you grab that arm and you impede a receiver's ability, the flag comes. Penalties have been an issue for Michigan State. That time, Jordan James with about a yard. And Nakai Martinez, the UCF transfer with the stop third and long for the Oregon Ducks. Here's this offensive line, and they've been great. Yeah, and as Allison reported on, just continuity the last couple weeks playing their best football. They are going to be faced here with a difficult third and long. Tess Johnson, not a surprise to see the shot in the first play of the game. But so much speed on that receiving core. Johnson in motion, wide of the formation. Gabriel looking that direction. He was hit by Spencer, and the ball came out. Let's see what they say. It's incomplete. It's an incomplete pass. Well, this is what UCLA did not do much of last week, and I was a little surprised, frankly. Bring unique pressures. And when you get to third and seven, well, this is what Boise did. This is what Idaho did. Right? They lined up in unique and different looks, and they brought defenders from different spots. And Gabriel, ooh, that's pretty close. The arm is going forward with control. That is an incomplete pass, but that is a, that is a big three and out for this Spartan crew. Well, they won the toss, they deferred, so they'll get the ball out of halftime as Ross James, who's only punted 12 times all year, gets this one off to Montori Foster Jr. and off the fair catch. Aiden Childs is just 19 years old. He turned 19 a couple of weeks ago. He was on the sideline when Oregon State was here at the end of last season. The turnovers have been the major issue, Brock. Yeah, his ceiling is incredibly high. His highlight reel is phenomenal this season. The problem is the low lights. It is the eight interceptions. It's the two fumbles. It's four games, Jason, where he's had two or more in those games. Take care of the ball and minimize the mistakes. Michigan State as a team tied for the second most turnovers at the FBS level. They run a lot of stretch plays, and Nate Carter goes down. That's Bryce Betcher, the baseball star, shooting through and a loss of two. Oh, man. Look out. Here is the offense for Michigan State. Tanner Miller, the interior has been pretty good for them. It is their strength, and he's one of the Oregon State Beavers that came out to East Lansing with this staff. Super solid in the middle. Nice to have a security blanket in belly. He and Childs were teammates, and really nice to have the explosive Nick Marsh receiver back. He and Glover both have been dinged up this year. They're both in the lineup today. Childs over the middle. That is inaccurate for Foster, and it's third down and 12. And this is where Tosh LePoy and this defense can really get creative. You talk about guys you know, Derek Harmon, the Michigan State transfer. Yeah, he'd been there. In fact, even in spring, transferred this summer out to Eugene. Devin Jackson, the Jet, can absolutely fly. And Jabbar Muhammad, the transfer from Washington, has had a spectacular season, hardly tested. But this is where the funk comes, and you can hear it. The fans know it. Third and ten plus, good luck. That's Belling split out out of the backfield. Childs. 
Third and 12. His throw to the sideline is juggled and caught by Glover. That's a first down at Michigan State, Jerron Glover. And that's a big boy throw. That is an NFL combine throw, the deep 10 to 14 yard out. And look at the strength and the fingertips. Oof. It's close, but I think I see ball security there. Glover, four catches, 53 yards, and a touchdown. I think he gathers just in the nick of time. Defense to say, hey, if you can make that throw, that's the most difficult throw on the field. Good luck on third and 10. They deliver. Play action. Childs, really clean pocket. He'll drop it off, and he's got Carter out of the backfield. He swung down on a big hit by Tatum to Iodi on a gain of six. And this is a little bit of what Childs did a week ago. You would never guess it when the final outcome of Ohio State in the second half was brutal, but he was very efficient. 10 to 13, a touchdown in the first half, distributed with poise and patience. An awfully big third and 12 conversion goes a long way for a young quarterback on the road. For this very proud Michigan State program, it's Carter, and he is doused. Jamari Caldwell, the senior out of South Carolina, third down. That's a uh, that's a big man that is moving right in the middle of it. Some 339 pounds and defeats the block. He's got about 45 pounds on Miller, the center, who just can't sustain him. Uh, the best surround sound in all of college football here at Austin Stadium. Carter on the run. He's not going to get there. And now the question is, are you going to go? You don't induce a lot of confidence with those last two plays. But if you're Jonathan Smith, you also know some of the limitations you have in the perimeter defensively against Dan Lanning. And when you cross midfield and you got fourth and two, this is the right call on the road. Alignment there. Nick Marsh was not getting on the line of scrimmage. Heads up play there by Aiden to call the timeout. When we come back, fourth and you've got to control it. And a play like this and a possession like this eats up even more minutes. And for Oregon, fast and furious. But you saw the opening shot to Tez. They can flat out run, and this defense wants to play angry. Fourth and two. Play action. Childs loads it up. Downfield. Caught. Nick Marsh, the freshman, in a battle for 44 yards with Muhammad. Wow. That is one heck of a catch. You're going to see the true freshman right here. Play action. They take away the flat two duck defenders there. And Muhammad, for one of the rare occasions this season, actually has somebody running by him. And it is a true freshman that then threw that distraction, threw that contact, goes up and makes the biggest catch of his young life. Freshman out of Detroit, who they really missed in the BC game. Play action again. Childs wants to run for it, and he is diving for it. Let's see. Ball is loose. It's in the end zone. It is Oregon football. Oh, another Michigan State turnover, at least for now. Wow. Jordan Birch is on it. And those two plays for a Michigan State fan at home watching this tonight are like, oh, my gosh. That just sums up our season. The ball is clearly out. A gorgeous throw on fourth down. The right decision when nobody opened to scramble, but then when you get around the pit in the pile in the big boys, you have to secure that football. It's Jamari Caldwell again who knocked it free. Is that the runner's knee was down prior to the ball? Whoa. Wow. So 
that this will go to replay review. They've stopped it. It's going to be under replay review right now. Wait, wait a sec. Now I think the correct answer is the ruling on the field of a fumble. That's what they went with last. So the reason that's important is you have to overturn the call on the field. They're going to say it's a fumble because it is. Uh, knee is not even close. Gave a little hope on an East Lansing only to be squashed that much more. Mike Pereira is with us. Mike, what do you see tonight here? Well, that's clearly out. I think the greater question is going to be the recovery player. Where is he when he recovers the ball in relationship to the goal line? Because if you control a loose ball and you take it into the end zone, your momentum takes you into the end zone, then that presents itself as a possibility of a spot at the one-yard line. So the question is clearly not Lerner being down. The question is, where are they going to put the ball when Oregon recovers? When it comes to momentum, Mike, what are we looking for here? You're just looking for the position of the ball, for one thing. And there you see him lose it a couple different times. And, and so there's a, lot, there's a lot to look at in this case. But, you know, you're looking to see if he had possession of the ball in the field of play. And then his momentum, just his original After momentum, you, took the it runner, in. The runner fumbled the ball prior to his knee being down. You're right on it, Mike. It was a touchback. It's another Michigan State turnover in the red zone. And uh, you're right, Brock. This is their season in one drive. Yes, but I love this right here in year one. Jonathan Smith, who's played the position, who knows, yes, you can't avoid every mistake, but he's calm, he's composed, he's looking right in the eye of the transfer who came with them from Corvallis and said just ball security. You can see him saying that when you get into those piles, you have to secure the football. It is the most valuable resource you have. Defensive coordinator for Oregon said the ball is life in football, and they worked on it. This week in creating those turnovers, it played there as Jordan James on the run. And a big dash for the first time this year in the run game for James. His longest run of the season, 41 yards. Yeah, and he could give a big tip of the cap to Trayshawn Holden right there. Your job as a receiver is go block that nickel back and make the corner tackle, and you can't do it better than that. And in fact, Connerly gets onto that corner, so then it is a one-on-one. -on -one. And how many times in the building did we hear yesterday, Jason, we have got to get that 20-plus run. We have got to find an explosive run, and they just did. Thank you to him. Gabriel on the move. His time sped up by Chris Bogle, the transfer from Florida, second down. But Michigan State is, is at least changing the footwork of Gabriel here. Yeah, a little bit of that timing, right? You take the shot on the very first play. This will be the, this will be the best front they faced. Oregon said that really clearly. This front for Michigan State is a Big Ten front. You got three or four four-stars. You got three or four six-year players. There's some grown men in that front that know how to play the game. Tez drops it in space. He's hit, and he's dropped. Ed Woods from the corner spot with an outstanding effort against one of the best run-after-catch guys in college football. That's because he could get to him before he could get started. And once again, look at the eyes there. The eyes are in the backfield. Two ducks go to block one Spartan. That is never a good thing. And Woods able to play tag and get to Tez Johnson before he could get started. Moves by the line. Marker comes out. Gabriel free play right to the stick. And he's got Evan Stewart. It looks like they're going to mark him a little bit short here. Let's see. That will obviously necessitate Oregon taking the penalty, maybe. Offside. Offside. Defense, number 11. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. Well, they are going to say first down. All right, they will move the sticks now. It looked like he had it. The initial spot was a little short. And he ran that right to the sticks for Dan Lanning. And Dylan Gabriel, a nice job there with the cadence and everybody up front to hold their water and just too much cushion on a third and ten. Gabriel steps up and throws it high and incomplete. One for four start. 
for Dylan Gabriel, which is rare, but first half against UCLA last week, they were a well-oiled deal. Yeah, when we saw them in Corvallis, they were maybe even more than that. I don't know what's more than well-oiled, but they were just and have been a machine. And the 20-plus yard plays, you see it there. They doubled them, but they hadn't had that run. That was the first run for Jordan James of 20-plus yards. And they have totally cleaned up the line of scrimmage, which has given Gabriel that opportunity to be so efficient. Second down, James running right, had a steam, broke a tackle, oh, he just bulldozed two guys, Jordan Turner ends up on the deck, Justin Dents in his well gain of 18. Uh, once again, watch the guys up front, look at Terrence Ferguson getting to the next level, and then Jordan James got thighs for days, man, he is a powerful man when he gets running full speed at you. An injured defensive player. Denson, the freshman, just took that on the chin. Jordan James looked like he got energized by that first run. Running a little like Bucky Irving right now. Well, look at my guy, Poncho, too. As Allison talked about, right in the middle of this. Watch these two big fellas, Jason. I mean, this is the game. Look at him. Just grunting. And then, oh, you know what? Here you go. How do you like 325? He's made a difference. Yeah. They, they tried some different moves up front. They wondered what they looked like at center and guard. And moving him right in the middle has just added more physicality. One of ten kids in his family. As Noah Whittington checks in for the first time today. And he tunnels his way down to about the seven. There's a marker coming in. Two of them, in fact. One of them hit Woods, the cornerback in the back. Face mask coming. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Yeah, that was Holden and Woods going at it. So you saw the mono e mono in the pile, right? <laughs> the previous play. But that time it was right on the perimeter with Holden and Woods. This is a physical crew, but penalties, unfortunately, have been a problem. In this stretch, they're in. And seven straight against either ranked teams or teams that have been ranked that's just not going to fly james the deep back jordan james off the hesitation it'll be second and goal for oregon in that same exact play a week ago and this is a little bit of the difference this is why will stein said to us this is good michigan state is stout up front this is not ucla that we're going to just be able to run right through they're going to meet, and that time it was the big D tackle, Amari Washington, right there in the hole, along with the fullback, Zach Grace. Not as much movement. Yeah, Washington still back there. They will run it again. James trudging forward, and he'll be stonewalled. Third and goal at the one. What these two drives have done, though, is they have eaten up a whole bunch of this first quarter. Which is really the way Michigan State has to play this game. It's got to be a limited possession game for them to find a way in this building where, as you said in the open, it is just so hard to win. See what Oregon's done on third down. Ohio State last week was 8 for 17 on third down. Play action. Grace got tied up. Gabriel on the roll. He'll throw back. Flashed in front for a huge pick. It's first and ten, Michigan State. Is this play action to Lynch Adams? Childs takes a hit and down he goes. Former Spartan Derek Harmon and a loss of 11. 
Yeah, the big man is just right in the middle of the action and does a fantastic job with his hands early. Right, just, well, he's actually unblocked. <laughs> doesn't buy it at all. Doesn't go down with the run or the fake. And instead says, no, I practiced against you guys in the spring. I saw some of this before I transferred in the summer to Eugene, and I'm going to finish you. To the portal a couple times. Second time he transferred here to Oregon. Second and 21. They'll run it. Lynch Adams is blown off downstairs. Allison. Michigan State coaches told us Childs is a work in progress, right? And one of the things he needs to be better about is obviously taking care of the ball, but also flushing those bad plays. And I'll tell you what, guys, he did after that turnover, really impressed of how he responded. He was the one that came to his teammates and was hyping them up, encouraging them, pounding on their shoulders, not the other way around. He told them, you guys have been awesome. That's on me, and I'm going to make it up to you guys. Impressive and mature response from the young quarterback. He's hearing it right now. Third and 16. Kyle's hopping around, flushed through the pocket. He's going to run for a while, fake the throw, go upfield and out of bounds. He's ushered there by Winston and Tuioti. A better decision, though, yeah. right? Don't try to force it. Yeah, and I do wonder, without the fumble, do you maybe take a shot down the field late as he's scrambling? Because there's nothing here. You're going to see the Ducks play coverage, keep everything in front of them. Right, zone coverage, you just run four defenders. This is a savvy veteran secondary that's seen everything. And Aiden Childs just gets what he can, and uh-oh. Number 15's danger, danger, danger anytime he's back there in space. His punt return for a touchdown helped Oregon stay unbeaten in week two against Boise State. The average is about 50 on his punts, and he'll go to the sideline with this. That's a really good ball. Johnson stays inbounds, and he will get hit. Spencer's down the field again. What a start he's had. Michigan State came to play. They know Oregon's got all this talent and all this speed, but they're bringing some of that Rust Belt grit, grit to Eugene. Brave. And at some point this season, if Dylan stays upright and he healthy, I'm going to guess after this start, completions. Bubbles, pitches, screens, try to get him back into rhythm. Now just two for seven. It's a rarity for Dylan Gabriel. There's one with Holden coming across the formation. And Trayshawn Holden, the Alabama transfer, ushered out by Martinez. No matter whether you've played six games or you've played 54 as a quarterback, and Will Stein knows this as OC and play caller on the sidelines, every quarterback needs gimmies, needs those lay-ins before you take those other deeper shots. Well, Will Stein said it to us yesterday. He said, look, I'm all about moving the ball forward. Right? Deep shots are fine, but I want to move forward. Some movement at the line. Yeah, check with me. That little double cadence to see exactly what they're in. It's a toss. It's James. Jordan James to the outside again. His best game so far. That's very nice to see for Oregon first down. And a nice job by Patrick Herbert out there in space. Not easy always to block out there. But sealed the edge Oregon. enough for Jordan James to just get going. When his feet don't stop and he can get that momentum at 5'10 and 205 pounds, he is no fun to tackle. He's been getting to the second level, but the third level just has been a couple yards here, a couple yards here, as long as 16 coming in. Gabriel flowing with James. He'll slam on the brakes and chuck it downfield, and a juggling grab by Holden. He was seated, and he made the catch. <laughs> grab a chair. <laughs> Gabriel is down. Play, not as comfortably as Holden. Yeah, old duck Anthony Jones just lit him up, but Holden, the concentration. You could see the hit coming. It is eight on eight crime, and it just knocks the air right out of his lungs. What a whipsaw that. And had that happen a few times, the wind is totally knocked right out of here. 
Dylan Gabriel standing on the sideline. Dante Moore in for at least one play, the UCLA transfer, and they'll run it with a hurdle for Whittington, and he ends up on his shoulder. He got upended by Martinez and Brantley. This is uh, Prefontaine's place, and this was track star stuff. <laughs> Prefontaine never did that. He's a little more of the distance type. That <laughs> was more of the hurdle. Maybe steeplechase. That was impressive as Gabriel's back on the field. To a roar. Yeah, pre with straight line speed. <laughs> he took that hit. I don't know if he would have gotten up back at the play. Gabriel back in, second and three. Straight up the middle, and they'll have the first down with Jordan James. Now the red zone has been so friendly to the tight ends the last couple years, and this is getting feisty. You can see it, you can hear it. I think the fans feel it. But Terrence Ferguson, Sadiq Herbert, a bunch of touchdowns a year ago. In fact, 10 in 2023 for this tight end crew. A bunch of productions, but no touchdowns yet for the big guys down in the red zone. Will Stein said he said, I've been trying maybe too hard. Well, they did on that interception. Yeah, tried to hide Terrence on the line. Such a matchup nightmare. James again, straight up the middle. And he's got a handful, so that will move the sticks. They had him short on the previous play, so first and goal for Oregon. Van Landing will tell you from the other side, as a defensive guy, the hardest thing in the red zone are teams that can run it. And Dylan Gabriel can use his legs. We've seen that this season. They've obviously established some of the run game presence. The this guy knows, man, got to find touchdowns against this salty Michigan State defense. Ferguson in motion. Gabriel running behind Ferguson. Terrence Ferguson, who was knocked out of that UCLA game, and he's going to come in motion. You'll see him come across the formation here, and he's the one that really sets the table. A tremendous fake, that speed and athleticism that is sneaky. And there is Ferguson with the big block to help his buddy get in. So the tight end then get the touchdown reception. But he gets a gold star on the grade sheet for sitting up. So is that setting up the touchdown for Dylan? After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct foul. Defense, number four. A 60-yard penalty in the enforcement is succeeding kickoff. We are now in the try for play. It's almost a guaranteed touchback coming. But uh, you're right. This tight end room has been involved, and they are a matchup problem. Even if they're not catching the ball, the defense is working on that. You know what else has been a little bit of a problem? Two missed PATs this year. Some of the gimmies as you just expect to go from such a short distance. Sappington missed one last week, earlier in the season as well. It's got to clean up this operation. This one is straight through. Oregon is well known as a uniform school. Some of the most innovative uniforms, but this one tonight, the yellow uniforms, Touch the heart of so many people around here, including the head coach and his family, Allison Williams. Yeah, well, this uniform isn't just to bring awareness to cancer, it's to say thank you to all the people that support those who are going through that fight. Truly beautiful story, Allison. And it is a very selfless thing by the Lanning family. They were very clear this is not about us, this is about everybody who deals with cancer and everybody who's helping treat cancer and their stories. And for Sophia, who again spent some time with Allison on the phone to talk about this, it is, it really is a beautiful thing to have her kids, Caden and Niles and Titan, be involved in this. And such a, such a loving family and such a dad on the other side who's so locked in on the psychology of football yep. and the joy that After it can create. Unsportsmanlike conduct foul. Kicking team, number zero. A 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. It's first down, Michigan State. He's not going to love that penalty, especially after the unsportsmanlike the other way. 
Yeah, what I just felt in talking you know, with Dan, as we all did yesterday, it's just not about me and it's not about us. It's about everyone else. And when you build a program that way, right, that, that story is so emblematic of it, but when you build a program that way <laughs> and you make it about your teammates and everyone else, you have a chance to fly. Michigan State trailing by a score now. It's Carter. He gets jammed up immediately and dropped by Tuioti, who's been much improved on that defensive line. Knock back, fall back, and close. That outside zone play, those were the three elements taught over and over and over this week. Tremendous knockback there. No chance to get that play started. And a little tempo for Brian Lindgren on this offense for Michigan State. We'll see if they do snap it for a final play in quarter number one. They're not going to. This is the end. A couple of red zone turnovers, but an Oregon lead trying to stay unbeaten in their home Big Ten opener. Find out here in this next quarter. I think he's got to continue getting to one. Okay, thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks to Allison and Dan Lanning there. Out of the timeout, second and eight for Michigan State. Aiden Childs three for four so far. Their ground game has not gotten untracked yet. They try to do it here, and Lynch Adams twirled around a nasty stiff arm, and Betcher finished him off. But for Aiden Childs, this is a quote from Tosh Lapoy on what he wants to do. <laughs> yes. That's right. I've said before, you really want your kid to grow up to be a quarterback because that's what these D coordinators want to do to your son. They want to get after you. It's about making you fully uncomfortable. Yep. On third and eight, pressure got there, and it's incomplete. He got hit as he threw and Foster the target. Birch coming around the corner, fourth down. Yeah, they just keep coming at you and at you and at you. I thought Birch played his best game as a duck a week ago against UCLA. He was just tossing Bruins, and he just doesn't move like a man that's 6'5", 290 pounds should be able to do it. It's why I talked to the NFL scouts on the field, some GMs that were here tonight. His movement skills are unique, and Jabbar, Jabbar Muhammad on the other end of it, he'll be playing in the league too. Birch walks into the room to talk to us yesterday. He's a big, quiet dude with glasses on. He looks like the nicest kid in history. He's a former running back who might be an NFL player very soon. This punt goes spinning inside the 20, and Eckley has been outstanding so far. That's nearly a 50-yard punt. And tomorrow, the NLDS begins on Fox and FS1 with two game ones. First, the Mets take on the Phillies, 3.30 Eastern time off that big Pete Alonso home run. Then at 8, Shohei Otani makes his postseason debut. Hard to believe. Dodgers and Padres tomorrow, Fox and FS1, the exclusive home of the NLDS. But you know what the Martin fans want to hear about. Mm. You know they want to hear about the ALDS. Yeah. They want to hear about the Tigers, Brock. What do you have on the Tigers? They're in it, right? They, okay. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> what a run. And your hair still smells like beer. <laughs> That's most Friday nights. First down for Oregon from the 16. Pump and go. It's a screen. It's Ferguson. Wide open grazing space. Terrence Ferguson still going. At the 21, he finally falls. 63 rumbling yards. Well, that will help your quarterback out, right? That will certainly help Dylan get into a little bit of rhythm there. You can't screen it better than that. You get about a thousand pounds out in front of Terrence. There's Poncho. It doesn't matter if he whiffs. He's out in front distracting. And Ferguson's a good one. Longest catch and run of Ferguson's career. James hits the hole hard. And he's got about 10. Denson took another hit. Yeah, you can just feel this, right? This just wave of yellow coming at you in the movement. And Connerly is washing people down. This is what they've done the last couple weeks, especially in Corvallis in the first half in Pasadena. It is the big fellas set the table for all of the speed and athleticism to work. Right back to him. It's a first down after he picked up nine and a half. 
on first down previously. Oregon Ducks only one loss here under Dan Lanning as Ferguson comes off. So good for Oregon to have him back. Took a nasty hit. Missed the second half of that UCLA game. Came back early in the week. Off that concussion and stunned tonight. Short toss Whittington. And he breaks it down. Malik Spencer got over to knock him down. It was late second quarter. Ferguson got that hit. And it's a deep tight end room, but he is a marvelous weapon. Uh, it's deep receiver room. It's a deep running back room. It's a deep tight end room. That's why they're number six in the country and the guys that are coming in next week. Look at Terrence uh, dancing around, having a little bit of fun as everybody does here in Austin Stadium. And they will have the attention of the Buckeyes next week because this is a talented roster. Gabriel starts his move. Behind Herbert, Gabriel breaks one tackle and gets bucked out of bounds at the five by Spencer and Denson, third and goal. Oh, this is an awfully big play here for Michigan State. If you want to stay within striking distance, you cannot become one-dimensional. Your line's not going to be good enough to block these guys in the passing game, so you've got to find a way right here to hold the Ducks to a field goal. They had an illegal backfield, so it's going to be illegal formation. Michigan State will take the penalty. The flag sometimes tonight will blend in with the jerseys. Do you take that penalty? Do you want second and going for 11 or third and five? Yeah, I'm with you on that. I think I take third and five and one shot at it with this offense and not trying to stop them twice. Ferguson, the point of the bunch. Go play action. Gabriel throwing. Intercepted by Brantley. As I said, you definitely take that penalty. You push him back and you make him throw. <laughs> that is twice. And Dan Lanning hates that. He hated it a week ago before half. He just told Allison, you cannot make these decisions and take points off the board. Throw it away if it is not there. But kind of like Spencer on the uh, first one, the closing speed of Brantley to finish. But it's rare that Dylan Gabriel has that happen twice. Yeah. Yeah, an anomaly a week ago, right? His first of the season there before halftime at UCLA, and two of them taking big points off the board. Spartans backed up deep. Childs. Throws it over the middle and a diving catch by Foster. First down, back to the pick. You'll hear moment of truth with defenses and different players. Watch Dylan Gabriel come out on the play action right here. This is the moment of truth. Is this enough separation for me to throw it in there? And you know what, Jason? Against Boise, right? Uh, against Idaho, that was. Against this Michigan State veteran crew, it's not. Spencer got him early. Brantley has the closing speed to finish, and that is two enormous takeaways in the red zone. All of the turnovers in this game have been in the red zone. Major turning points. Lynch Adams on the run. Dylan Gabriel, two years at Oklahoma, 12 interceptions, six a year. It is highly rare. It's like total eclipse rare to have two in the red zone in one yep. game. And he knows it, and that's what is just most frustrating. It's one thing for Childs, who's learning on the fly, as we talked about his sixth start. It's number 54 for Dylan. That moment of truth, those decisions he's made time and time again, but they've been costly this evening. Giles Bales rolling to his right, throwing across his body. He's got Velling, the tight end, the transfer from Oregon State. That's a really nice catch from his security blanket, as Aiden said. One of the guys that knew the system like he did when he transferred from Corvallis. Once again, these fans, these astute fans that know their ball, are going to make life difficult at the line of scrimmage. Michigan State one for four on third down. Call it third and three. Belling in the slot. He'll look the other way, and that is incomplete. He was looking for Foster. 
And a miss for Childs, fourth down. And it's all his feet, Jason. Just look at Childs' feet. Just watch these right here. It has been the big challenge this season with accuracy, especially to his left. Just never get set. Yeah. You've got to set your feet. Put your foot in the ground. They can't move like that. You lose all your power. You see that? When he throws it, he's on his front foot. So what does the ball do? Dies into the ground. But just some credit to the crowd, to the havoc in front of them, and the lack of fundamentals right there leading to that incompletion. He's worked on it. He's used meditation, trying to take a breath. And that time he got sped up as Eckley boots it away. He's been tremendous so far tonight. This one's going to check up. Not as good of a punt to the 45-yard line. I guess we'll see some run. You think so? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> How's your crystal ball? We're going to find out next. In front of him, and the lack of fundamentals right there leading to that incompletion. He's worked on it. He's used meditation, trying to take a breath. And that time he got sped up as Eckley boots it away. He's been tremendous so far tonight. This one's going to check up. Not as good of a punt to the 45-yard line. I guess we'll see some run. You think so? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> your crystal ball we're gonna find in that first quarter those screen games been effective I think you get back to trying to maul them and then a little play action pass Kirk James 96 yards on the ground already he'll go over 100 right here well Brock your intuition was strong well, it's not difficult and once again look at these big guys in this case it is Connerly that is just blocking down in this counter game or a little pin and pull has been super effective Sadiq as well you know the great thing about this tight end room Jason what's that is Ferguson Sadiq and Herbert all push one another the competition has just made all of them grow and develop Ted Johnson a little orbit motion there James broke one tackle. Man, he's running like he's on fire tonight. There is a marker in. Yeah, I think that's against Michigan State with hands to the face of the left guard, Struther. There is no foul hands on the place on the play. If there was a foul, that would have been it. That's what they were looking at. It was not going to be against Oregon because once again, just look at the movement. Right, you're just pulling guys around. It is Sadiq that's going to come through after the broken tackle. And when he gets the motor going, at least D coordinators say to us, what, kill the motor, kill the motor. Yeah. The motor is those legs. And when he gets those legs turning and pumping, he is a load to tackle. Already the fifth run of 10 plus today for Oregon. Here's Whittington picking his way, and he's slammed down after a gain of six. Run. Run, run, run. Well, Michigan State, a lot of 185 yards on the ground to Ohio State last week. It's on tape. And Oregon's taking advantage of it right now. Yeah, and this is what you do when your quarterback is throwing a couple picks. You don't go necessarily as punishment away from him, but the strength of this crew, certainly the last three weeks, two weeks, has been this offensive line lean on him. Johnson breaks away from the formation. They'll run it again. It's Whittington, and he is stifled. Anthony Jones, the former duck for a couple of games two years ago, sets up a third down. Four down territory. Do you? I, it feels like three might be important in a game like this, the way the scoring's going. The way your defense is playing? I, I'm always team go for it, but tonight, I don't know. You're not satisfied. It might be QB run as well if you get the right look. They go empty, third and four. That's James to the left. They'll run that way. Yes, they do. Dylan Gabriel tiptoes out of bounds. First and goal. Do you have the playbook? Is that what's happening? <laughs> no, but I have Terrence Ferguson blocking once again. Yeah. I see a lot of Travis Kelsey. I said at the Oregon State game, I just see, I see the frame, the ease of movement, and this is a great call. The quarterback's throwing a couple picks in the red zone. He's already run for one touchdown. Let him run again. But this is the way they did it against Jonathan Smith's Oregon State team in this building last year over Thanksgiving. Fourth trip 
to the red zone for Oregon. James keeps his feet somehow and weaves his way to the three. Have you seen this level of confidence in his steps so far this year? I'll take in James? Yeah. Yeah, he, he just runs behind his pads. Doesn't he just look like you hear scouts say that? Right, oh man, this guy really runs behind his pads. He's got just such tremendous contact balance. And when you do watch him run, it's like a race car for Will Stein going around to Ben. He just kind of lowers, right? And getting that center gravity gets lower and tougher to tackle. Washington back in. The defensive tackle is in there. They'll toss it wide. There's that race car in. Checkered flag, Jordan James. Uh, just perfect timing with all the motion and the mechanics here, Jason. You're going to see the motion come across. You're going to see Dylan Gabriel time that motion perfectly. So it just freezes that Michigan State defense for just a beat. Cal Halliday's got his eyes in the backfield for just one beat. And that's all it takes for Jordan James to get outside and win. Well, you got to worry about Connor Lee because he's been a target before. Remember last <laughs> year, they had him split out in the slot there. And eventually, this looks like it's going to be an extra point try. Seven plays, all runs for Oregon. Extra point is good. Andrew Boyle kicks it through. 14-0 Oregon. A rugged ground game has turned up. Wow. He's going to add to that. It seems like every time we're here, there are echoes of that Oregon State game a couple years ago and how physical they were. And you can see the physicality from the defense. I love sitting with Tosh LaPoy and learning football. The three keys all week knocked back. And you see it right in the middle, right there with Amari Washington. And then you see the fallback from Brandon Johnson falling into that because he's got not, not any responsibility. And the Tuioti closes. Knockback, fallback, close. Those were the elements preached over and over and over versus this outside zone that, let's face it, they're very familiar with in Jonathan Smith. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct foul, receiving team, number 40. Half the distance to the goal from the succeeding spot, it's first and 10, Michigan State. Why is that concept so important specifically against this type of run game? Well, as he said, teaching in threes, there's just a psychology behind that. And in this run scheme, that's how you defeat it. Right? You knock people back right in the middle of that line before it gets started. Then you make sure you've got eyes that are falling back into the play. And then you violently close. This isn't just about talent and speed and strength. It's about attention to detail. And Tosh does a great job teaching it. First down, Childs sees the pressure from Birch. He bails again. Childs on the run, breaking it down, and then leaning forward for the first down, it looks like. This feels like a drive that's got to eat up a lot of that. Right, just one of those possessions, and Michigan State's done it this year against Maryland, against Boston College, heck, even early against Ohio State. I haven't done it today, as you can see, with the fumble and three punts in a row, but they can possess the ball. They will get the ball to begin the second half. It's not a favorable spot. They'll mark him short second and one. Remember, the two-minute timeout is in there as well. Carter changing direction and slipping a tackle. Carter is down after a first down gain to the 32. Tyshim Johnson finally took him down. And that's the first run where you actually see movement, where you don't see Michigan State knocked back into the line of scrimmage. And when you create that movement, you give Carter, Lynch, Adams, two very capable backs, the opportunity to have some space to operate. The one thing that's killed him this year is 31 negative tackles for loss. 31 last in the Big Ten. That has been the biggest disruptor to the offense right alongside the turnovers. Play action. Here comes Uyangalale. Now Childs is wrapped up and he holds on to the football. Betcher finished the deal for Washington. And this is a really tough block for a tight end, Paracek.
trying to block these edge players, whether it is Tuioti, in this case, Ui Anglele, Birch plays out on that edge. They just get a field with tremendous speed, and then you're running for your life. Betcher, we just had a shot of him smiling. Have you ever seen a center fielder like contact that much? <laughs> no. But he's feeling more and more like a linebacker and less and less like a center fielder, and that neck roll helps. Second down. Uyangalale gets home, and Childs goes down. Speed to power. Previous snap was all speed, right? Beating the tight ends. This is speed and then the power to go right through Lippo, right to the QB. And now this drive, which needed to sap some time off, might be on its last legs. I'll take it all the way down and take a timeout, maybe. And they will. So if you're Michigan State here, third and 13, what is on the menu? Well, what are your options? That's what they were just discussing. <laughs> I think Jonathan said, you figure it out. I'm the head coach and no longer the play caller because this defense has just been ferocious. I love the big fella right in the middle of it. Caldwell is a dancing bear, but he's not the only one. All of them have gotten busy. Harmon against his former teammates. The sack there, the big hit, the recovery by Birch. Here comes the sack by Harmon. When it's Caldwell, it's Washington, it's Harmon, it's Birch. That's how you become a dominant team and really difficult to play in this building. And then throw a little, well, a little sugar on top with those defensive ends and outside linebackers, Uy Anglele and Tuoti, that can really run. You mentioned how well they pass along information to each other. It's a team Communic effort. Yeah, communicate so well so they can, again, physically and mentally assault that quarterback. Gotta get to the 42. Giles sees the heat again, and it's a yellow rush one more time. Jordan Burch takes him down. Watch the little stunt inside. They do such a good job of this, of helping each other out. You can see the inside stunt that just creates the chaos. And then Birch is able to finish it from the edge. It's three and a half sacks now, and he is just driving that poor, young, 300-pound redshirt freshman tackle right back into the lap of the quarterback. It's just a bunch of angry highlighters running at you. The meanest pen case you've ever seen. Oregon should get it when we come back. Environment, and it's part of the reason they're 30 and 1 in their last 31 home games. We were here for that only loss against Washington, and that was sort of a star cross night. You know, fumble here, fourth down didn't go well. Probably could have won that game as well. They just made it an event. You got to be at. Luckily to punt, the homestanding Ducks will get it back and says Johnson waves for a fair catch. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary sponsored by Splash. Pacific Life creating financial security for nearly 160 years. The turnovers have been the story in large part. Michigan State, a costly one that just feels like the same story. It does, and then you gotta just throw in Oregon's run game. I mean, for Jordan James already to have a career high Jason, on first down, they are averaging 13 yards a play. <laughs> I mean, it's it's offset those red zone turnovers that you're absolutely right have been a part of the story. And if that last drive was all about runs, you know a shot is coming at some point on this drive. With three timeouts at 113 seconds, and we will have a marker first. Legal snap. Oh, punch Offense. Off. Number 72. Five-yard penalty. It's still... First down. How fun was he yesterday? Um, he's a joy to talk to. I love Olima. They just have so much fun, and you said joy. 
humility. What a great kid. A musician, a center, and a tremendous kid. Second chance on the run for James. It'll be second down coming up. And just hearing the way he built as the whistle blows, and they finally stop the play. He was talking about being more confident in his calls, yes. being more vocal, and he actually got louder as he was talking to us, just kind of <laughs> getting into character. Yes. That's what happens when you transition from guard to center. you got to be the mouthpiece in the middle of it all. Second and 12. Gabriel, short set, got it away into wide open space. Tez Johnson changing direction. And I don't know that we've talked to anybody all year who's given us a better visual for what they do. He said he was great at playing tag growing up. He used to run on the top of the monkey bars, through the slide, everything to avoid the bigger kids. And he's still doing it as a college football player. Loads of time. Drop it off. Jordan James breaking a tackle, getting outside and out of bounds. And by the way, never got caught. Ever. <laughs> yes. With great pride, he said that to us, Tez Johnson. So, if linemen have that humility, that selflessness, maybe receivers got a little bit of athletic arrogance. But you can picture it, right? You sure. can picture him running around. Running to the top of the monkey bars? Yeah. <laughs> yes. There he is in motion, as always. Tez Johnson's in motion. Get it to him again. Johnson looking for contact with Spencer dropping the shoulder. And I love that. And his teammates do, too. At 161 pounds, he's not just looking to duck out of the way. He took a shot against UCLA on a little end around that, I mean, he, you, you can't hit anybody harder. He was the first one to pop up. Could he have ducked out there? Sure. But he wants to put his shoulder right into Malik Spencer and say, I am here. He hates coming out for blockers in practice. Still over a minute, which gives them time to run it again. Jordan James, another dash. Gain of 15. Well, I just keep sounding like a broken record, but watch Poncho as Jordan hobbles off right in the middle here. Watch Poncho, watch Terrence Ferguson. Look at him. It is pin, it is pole, it is coming around and just setting the table. There's nobody that touches him. There's not a Spartan before 10, 12 yards down the field, but that hit. Oregon hurt as the first of the, for the knee immediately. 30 seconds. But what a night. He's over 150 yards. Yeah, that one stings right now, and he is trying to fight through it because he's having a blast. He is loving the movement that is happening in front of him. That his first run of 20 plus on the season. But most of these highlights, look at where the contact is, Jason. It's not at the first level. It's hopping over the second level, and it is getting to that third level, or it's getting in the end zone. Even with Bucky Irving here, he was a big-time touchdown maker, but he wasn't the bell cow, and now he's become that. That's a great sign if you're an Oregon fan. As he's shooing away the trainer saying, I'm fine. I want to build on this career night because I want a two. And that's very possible if he continues to get more touches. Two timeouts left for Oregon. Gabriel out of the way quickly. Trayshawn Holden gave some ground to pick up some more. It's a first down inside the 20. And this is a little more of the Dylan Gabriel we saw the first four weeks. Those feet are settled, right? Strong and firm in the ground. Conviction to put the ball right on the numbers. Decisive again, this time on the check down, it's Whittington. They have two timeouts. We'll see if they use one here. Yes, indeed. Dan Lanning was going to run to the end zone if he had to. Oregon. That is their second of the half. One left for Oregon, 30 seconds. Michigan State will have the ball out of halftime. It feels imperative that they not give up seven here. And if you're Dylan Gabriel, it feels imperative that you make great decisions in the red zone that have cost your ducks some significant points. So how do you, if you're Will Stein, how do you call plays here to try to encourage them? Well, it's interesting. Both picks were where? Out of pocket. Yep. So for Jonathan Smith, he knows, like, man, those are gifts. Because Dylan Gabriel does not give you those kind of turnovers very often. But you've seen, actually, I think Gabriel more comfortable just sitting there in the pocket. So 
QB run has been highly effective. But this might be staying between the tackles and trying to create a matchup for Terrence Ferguson. Ortez, and that's the advantage Will Kane has. He has mismatch makers galore. I was going to say the last word was to Ferguson before he entered the huddle. Does that mean anything to you as a quarterback? Could be, and he's at the bottom of the screen right here, isolated. Gabriel rolling that way. Throwing that way. End zone incomplete. Holding the target, Woods with the coverage, third down. Yeah, that was a dot, as the kids like to say, and Holden knows it. Holden could have had a touchdown for the fourth straight game, as that one, I think, gets right off of his sternum. Fell down earlier on a route, made an extraordinary catch, and this time it just gets into his body a little bit, and Woods give him credit for ripping it away. Perfect timing by Woods. It was. But that's one that Treshawn will tell you once it gets to my hands, it can't leave. Quick snap. Gabriel right down the middle. What a change of direction for a first down for Tez Johnson. Complete, Tez Johnson. One timeout. Yeah, 17. Go. Spike it. And yeah, they will. So that cost them four seconds. You have, what, two, three plays here. To the end zone. Play, yep. Timeout as well. Yep, everything on that call sheet for Will Stein is available to him right here. His wife is a Spartan. His family is <laughs> full of Spartans on his wife's side. So mother-in-law may not be rooting for me tonight, but I'm rooting for a tight end to get a touchdown reception at some point this year. She said to him, do you think you guys are going to beat us? He said, who's us? I thought we all were us. Throw from Gabriel. That's incomplete. He did want Ferguson. Third down coming up. Spencer's been really good tonight. Sure has. Gives up some size, obviously, to Terrence Ferguson, but he's made up for it with his quickness, awareness, the Buford grad. It's been all over the ball. Amazing how quiet this place gets. They know their football. And they've seen a lot of good football this century. They're part of the show. Timeout, Michigan State. Timeout, Michigan State. Well, you know, they, they have all the instructions, right? A little bit louder now, a little bit softer now. <laughs> and they're a little bit softer now. Sunday, huge day of NFL football. One Eastern, the Browns take on the very accurate Jaden Daniels and the Commanders, or at four. Kyler Murray and the Cardinals take on Brock Purdy and the Niners. Check your local listings for the game in your area. It's all only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Jaden Daniels and Dylan Gabriel actually have had basically mirror image starts yep. to their year, both over 80% coming into the week. A bunch of gimmies, a bunch of easy completions. Not necessarily been the story tonight. They've taken a few shots down the field. I love the aggressiveness of the very first play call. A couple uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic turnovers down in the red zone. They have Ferguson and Whittington together at the top of the formation. And then the bunch left. Third and goal. Gabriel lets it rip. End zone, Stewart! Played 54 games, Benetti, you will let it rip as you're going to see Stewart do a beautiful job on this corner route of knowing where he is, securing the catch. Young quarterbacks, when they throw a couple picks in the red zone, you know what they become? Tentative. Exactly. Hesitant. I'm not going to pull the trigger. i got to see him before I throw it. Not Dylan Gabriel, and especially not on that throw. Sappington back on for this extra point after Boyle hit the last one. It's good. Decisive throw in Oregon with a late first half meaningful touchdown in this game. Anticipation and accuracy right there alongside decision making, right? Watch when Dylan Gabriel throws this ball. He's got a corner route, right? Right here. A little corner route. And the ball is out of his hands before he's even out of his break. Again, watch 
Didn't feel the pressure. He got a little pressure, and that ball is out into the one spot that Evan Stewart can go get it. Young court match, you're throwing two picks. Don't throw it with that anticipation. They hold it. Is he open? I can't throw a third interception. Dylan Gabriel says flush it, play the next play, and play with anticipation. So look, Dylan Gabriel climbing the charts in college football, the all-time passing touchdown leader is Case Keenum. He's 20 away from that. But that touchdown there was a response, it looked like, to the throw that maybe he left a little short that Brantley picked off on the right side yes. of the end zone. Yes, yes. Right? Similar, similar concept, but from the pocket, there's a comfort level, right? Yeah. There's a, okay, I know what it's looked When I get outside the pocket, the timing of those plays, Jason, can change. And that calculus of when to pull the trigger can change. Not right there. You had no time. You got to let it rip. Speaking of change, the duck has changed. He was wearing a vote for Pedro Napoleon Dynamite shirt in the pregame. <laughs> Dylan Gabriel has looked a little like Uncle Rico here in the first half. 21 nothing Oregon with the lead. Yeah, but Oregon defensively has looked like the number 16 in the country, and Aiden Childs like this is a nightmare. Dylan's flushed a couple mistakes. This could easily be a 35 nothing game, right? Or 35 7 if Michigan State doesn't fumble. But run game difficult. Pass protection worse. Oregon's defense. Which one gets ready for the Buckeyes rolling in here in eight days? 15 runs, 22 yards for Michigan State. That's a yard and a half on the ground per touch. Dan Lanning. And Oregon 23 and 1 together went up at halftime, but that loss, the head coach on the other side was there for. And done a really good job of controlling Michigan State quarterback Aiden Childs from scrambling. As for Jonathan Smith and this offense, he said we have to find a way to get something going. They're just struggling to convert right now. He said a lack of a run game has led to a lack of protection. They have to find a way to stay on the field and help his defense out a little bit. This opening drive will tell the tale of that in a big way. They deferred, so they have it out of halftime as the freshman Marsh, when a big catch early, is in motion, and he'll throw it to Velling, the tight end, with his second grab. This is the second half against Ohio State, Oregon's next opponent last week. Yeah, the Spartan moved the ball in the first half, but just got nothing, I mean, nothing going. And the challenge was a lot of what we're seeing in the first 30 minutes. It's young, inexperienced offensive line, a young quarterback. And when you become one-dimensional, it's a problem. He threw it for six on first down. It's a run for Childs straight up the middle, and he gets belted across the 40-yard line by Tysheem Johnson, who had that nice pick last week at the Rose Bowl. And again, I said earlier, like, Childs' highlight reel, like, if you were just, you know, a recruit, you're putting your huddle plays on old YouTube, his highlight reel is pretty good. He, he can throw it. He can run it. He's got tremendous acceleration. You just saw him there bust the angle as a secondary player. It's minimizing the low lights. It'll be the real key for him in the second half and, frankly, the rest of the season. Turnovers have just been enormous for Michigan State in this three and two start. Childs along the right side to Iodi in pursuit. He got a hand on him and then eventually finished off by Jeffrey Bassa. Second down coming up. And Jack Valley there out in front doing his best. Terrence Ferguson. You saw that exact play from Oregon earlier on a touchdown by Dylan Gabriel. Nice adjustment here from a veteran staff. Jonathan Smith, Brian Lindgren, a bunch of the staff team with him from Corvallis. Not a surprise to have some answers here on the opening drive, the opening script. Against an Oregon run defense that did allow 192 yards to Ashton Genty of Boise State, a Heisman candidate in week two. They'll run it again with Lynch Adams, and he's going to be short by about a yard. Third and one. It was interesting asking Brian Lindgren, what do you see with Oregon? You played him so many times, and he did not hesitate. Length. I mean, big people that can move. And in this building, feed off the crowd. Third and one. Childs changing direction to get the first down. 
And he nearly gave it back. Savage spiked him down. He was thinking about giving a little ground there, and instead he just took the hit. He's capable of doing this. Again, he's got excellent athleticism. As you're going to see, the play get bottled up in front of him, and he can feel that cutback come wide open. Birch not quite able to seal that edge on the backside. Aiden Childs takes it, and for one of the rare occasions on third down, actually moves those chains. How about on that play, they brought in Brandon Tullis, the freshman from Dallas, as the tailback. Now Lynch Adams is back into Oregon territory off play action, and he is drilled. Birch closes the deal. You know what? That's just not fair. I mean, watch this strength. Not only does Birch move like a running back wide receiver that he used to be, he then just absolutely ragdolls the offensive linemen. I mean, just, just tosses them. It's Ashton Lepo. That's 308 pounds. He had a high school coach say he was too slow to play offense. And a high school coach didn't know football. <laughs> well, I don't so, know about that. All right, if he's watching tonight, I apologize. For second down and he can't even hear a marker should come out play clock got to zero and they're going to call timeout timeout Michigan State, Michigan State. That's a oh. we say this all the time about sport it's communal in venues like this one right, that have just become an event that people have got to be a part of really highlight bringing people together in special ways that was awesome I think of everything we missed a couple of years ago when there were no fans in the stands, and this is one of those places that is just brilliant as Gabriel on what looked like it might have been a busted play. Picks up about a yard, second down, coming up. If you missed it earlier, Oregon wearing these yellow jerseys that were designed by the Lanning family to celebrate the heroes who helped Sophia Lanning, Dan's wife, recover from cancer years ago as you see the offense for Oregon on the ground so far tonight. Yeah, that rushing game has just been terrific and honestly been the big fellas, the tight ends, everybody getting involved, the receivers blocking. That's what it takes to have that kind of production. Again, this is a salty Big Ten veteran front seven that they have gashed a bunch. Second out throw, Gabriel. Got it over the middle. Tez Johnson wheeling and firing all the pistons for a first down. Look at the moves, the yeah. arsenal he has. Well, this is just a mismatch. This is good coordinating. This is getting Tez on a weak side linebacker on a little option route, and there's no chance. There's not a there's not a weak side linebacker in college football that can cover that. I don't know if there are many, honestly, Jason, in the NFL that can cover that. So kudos to Will Stein, that scheme creating matchups. And putting Tez Johnson in space. He's got a wide array of dance steps, though. I mean, you see, he puts the foot in the ground, a jagged step, and a spin. And now, first down, it's James out of the Wildcat, running behind Tez Johnson, who threw his body at nobody. It was a good effort on the block. James ends up. A, no, he did. No, you watched, he gave the something. effort. Why would you say something like that? He's. He's like 10 pounds heavier than you, Benetti. It's 161 <laughs> pounds. It's fun to watch him give everything. He just happened to miss. He was courageous. And so they'll give it to him in space. Tez Johnson. What would you call that formation, quarterback? Tez Johnson on the end of the What would you call it? There is one. Okay. It's a swinging gate that never swung. <laughs> yes. It's a stationary a gate. Good snap on the throw. And a little comeback for Ferguson to get the hands underneath. Oregon's cooking now. Uh, once again, it is just the body control of this guy that's unique and why he's going to be a good one at the NFL level. He just, this is not a great throw. Once again, you're getting a matchup on a weak side linebacker in space. And that ball he's expecting in front of him is a catch and run, but instead, I mean, honestly, it looks like a six foot, 200 pound receiver, right? Going down effortlessly to dig that one out, and he just happens to be 6'5, 255. Just as low into the ball game, and he puts it on the ground. Second down, you mentioned Travis Kelsey earlier and in the Oregon State game. 
as a cop. It's just the way they move. They move with an ease that is just not typical of guys their size. And then when you look at their frame, and you can go to the combine, and he's going to measure very similarly. They're so savvy in space, the body control. He just showed that off. And while he's not found the end zone this season, he's found it 13 times in his career, one away from the school record. Maybe the difference maker at the next level, too. The second year in tight end catches overall as Whittington's got the run. He's fifth in tight end yards. He's third in tight end touchdowns behind Josh Wilcox and Justin Peel from your area. And then he just plays the game kind of like Kelsey does. He sees it through the quarterback's lens. He was not a high school quarterback. Unbelievably productive there in Colorado in high school, at Heritage High School. And he sees the game like a quarterback. And it's beneficial. Right, Michigan State up showing an all-out blitz, what looks like a cover zero. Well, they come with it. They'll back off a couple. Gabriel steps up, snaps it off. Right down the middle, incomplete for Stewart through his hands. And he is down through the back of the end zone. Stewart went high and lost control of his body to brace himself. Look at Poncho right in the middle of it. I think we, you, know, you can hear him complaining, but watch the center here. This didn't happen week one or two. This was a blitz they saw against Boise State, and they did not have that kind of communication. Poncho sees it. He gives Dylan a chance. An all-out effort from Stewart. We'll check on him when we come back. About 50 here for Boyle, who missed all of last year with injury. First week, he's not been on the injury report this year. From straight away from 50, and this one is true. That's big news for Oregon. Dan Lanny knows it, too. He knows Ohio State, Michigan, the rest of this Big Ten schedule. You're going to have to make big kicks. It can't just all be touchdowns and explosive plays. Atticus Sappington, a long of 48 in his career, so a little bit outside his range. And as you mentioned, getting Boyle back, a big deal. And now a word from Hampton by Hilton. Hilton for the stay. Welcome to Hampton by Hilton. Big game tomorrow. You guys ready? Oh, we're ready, Gus. <laughs> Which way is the room? Bring it in. 301, two queens, best sleep guarantee. So comfy. Oh, it's Nailed it. One, two, three. Oh! Syrup. They're hungry for the win. Oh. Big time. When you're playing to win, it matters where you stay. Hampton by Hilton. Hilton for the stay. Gus and Joel are such professionals, they actually sleep in their suit and tie, getting ready for big news. <laughs> well, they got to get up early. I love those people at the hotel. They're like, is that Gus and Joel crushing the continental breakfast? That is. 24 <laughs> nothing, Oregon. And the kickoff from Sappington. Lynch Adams from the two. And he is hemmed in beautifully by the coverage team of the Oregon Ducks. All right, this is culture building time. I mean, you can see it's just a domination by Oregon, almost four to one there offensively in yards. But for Jonathan Smith, by these final 20 some minutes on the clock, it's important that Childs grows up. It's important that you minimize mistakes. Well, his whole thought is to get better as the season goes on. We'll get better as this game goes on as well. They're in the middle of seven straight games against either ranked teams or teams that have been ranked at some point this season. So it's not going to get any easier. A little momentum goes a long way. The ball's on the ground. Marsh trying to track it down, and he's on it at about the nine. But that is another microcosm of how this has gone. And this happens so fast, and it's all about the timing. As you see, Marsh, that ball is right in his belly. Oftentimes, as a QB, you can put it a little bit high or a little bit hot. That one hit him in the belly, and he just had his eyes up to the young freshman of what was coming his way before he secured it. See all the talking from Oregon defensively. Bassa in the middle of it. 
Giles gets to the edge and creates some room. He just got shoved down by Birch. Third down Giles. coming up. That's been their best play so far. It has, but Birch can move, man. If he helped himself in the NFL's eyes a week ago, as some were saying in the building, he's put on even more of a show tonight. A couple sacks, and again, just that ease of speed for a man that's 6'5", 290, kind of like that. I think there's any ease of speed there. Third and two. That could be delayed. And get the timeout. They did not. See, that's where this crowd 100%. becomes a major issue. It's just chaos. You know, when I asked Dan Lanny, like, what have you learned about Austin? So I've learned that these people are engaged every time and they know the game. To say it never rains at Austin Stadium, it's raining sound on third and seven. Childs bailing again. Birch is after him. Childs sideline incomplete. He wanted Marsh. Well, how many times have you said Birch tonight? I mean, seriously, how, how many times have you mentioned his name? Once again, a nice little stunt. He doesn't get home, but then he takes the right angle. And most DNs, Aiden Childs is going to say, I can get by. Not that guy. Not tonight. We've said Birch enough, people are going to think we're tree enthusiasts. I do like a Birch tree. Uh, yeah. yeah. Didn't say they'd be wrong. Fourth down, punt for Eckley. Not much returnable so far for Tez Johnson. He'll try this time. From inside the 30, switching back, Tez Johnson. Goes down after the 51 yard punt. The return takes him across the 35. Oregon has been overwhelmed. Is sponsored by T Mobile, America's largest 5G network. Ten years ago, Michigan State and Oregon, an epic game, huge game in early September. Both teams in the top 10. Marcus Mariota, three touchdowns, 46 27. We apologize to our colleague. Mark Helfrich for not showing him more than three times in the billboard bed there. Mark deserves as much face time as we possibly can give him. 161 yards for Jordan James outgaining Michigan State tonight. Oregon back on the ball. First down run right back to him. Jordan James straight up the middle. Jordan James. I'm curious about these final 19 minutes, Jason, about how much you show if you're Oregon. Ohio State coming up. Yeah, Ohio State's coming in the building next week. I think for Dan Lanning, the way your defense is playing, unrealistic that Michigan State can make enough plays against you to even this score or get close. And this may be time where you just have a little conversation with staff that probably don't need to show anything new. Gabriel. On the roll, he unleashes, sideline route, first down. Trayshawn Holden. Easy does it for Dylan Gabriel. Yep. And once again, just look at the effort of the guys around him. Don't just watch the ball. Watch the line. Watch the tight ends. Look at Kenyon Sadiq. Just hold the point there. So nobody was within breathing room of Dylan Gabriel, and he can let it rip. We know he doesn't need time to throw necessarily because he does have a quick release. That time he was able to plant and fire and across midfield for Gabriel off play action. He's going to load up the catapult downfield. Tipped incomplete. Tez Johnson tried to high point it and couldn't reel it in. How long did he just hang in the air? Looked like he was suspended by a cable. Yes. And you can see that ball's a little wobbly, which leaves it loose. Look, he's just like 
defying gravity as he's hanging in the air trying to corral that Aaron throw. You don't see a wobbly ball from Dylan Gabriel very often. What causes that? Just, just a little bit off. James trying to squeeze through the car wash and he leaps for a couple yards. You know, there is not a breath of wind. There is no rain, no moisture or anything like that. You know, typically, when I'm, I love watching Dylan warm up and how meticulous he is and his fundamentals and techniques, he gets on top of the ball, Jason. So if you're underneath the ball, I think he was a little bit on that one. That can create a little bit of that sail and a little bit of that wobble, but it is rare. Third and six here. It's Tez Johnson. We'll see how Michigan State handles his motion. He's right at the stick. Gabriel has forever. Seven Mississippi. Eight Mississippi. Incomplete. There is a marker in. We'll check the penalty. I don't know how many times I've seen a two-man rush. That they didn't get there. That was truly an intentional two-man rush. Yep. There are two fouls on the play. An eligible player downfield. Offense, number 50. Holding. Defense, number 15. Those fouls offset. It's still third down. Joe Rossi is an inventive defensive play caller. His Minnesota teams really did a number on some Big Ten schools that they maybe had no business doing that to. Yeah, and Gross had to hold on, and Strother was somehow the left guard running the route. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. That should be offside. Should be a free play. Gabriel is going to go down, but they'll get five yards out of it. It's Bogle who jumped. There are two markers down. Could we have back-to-back -back offsetting penalties? This is why you tune into Friday Night Football. There are two fouls on the play. Illegal shift. Offense. Offside. Defense. Those fouls offset. It's still third down. You know what I like about Brian Banks, our referee, is he told the story of that. His it's still third down was even incredulous himself that he just had back-to-back -back offsetting penalty. And I think Dan and Jonathan are wondering, we can't possibly have a third. And six again. Whittington and Ferguson again on the same side up top. Gabriel, short set, quick release, change of direction, and a slippery move from Tez Johnson for a first down again. Yeah, Jordan Turner's having an amazing year, the middle linebacker for Michigan State, but this just is not fair. And, and I think you're absolutely right. If any player that's described anything, when Tess, when Tess said to us, I play a game of tag, that's what I was amazing at. Look, he doesn't even get touched. No. He said they made him it first at all times because if he wasn't, they were never going to catch him. So he broke the game, basically, when he was growing up. Whittington right into the middle of that line, and Maverick Hansen. Back from the injury last week, second down no. coming up. Yeah, that captain stood his ground right there. It looked like last week that injury. I think that was one of your first questions to Joe Rossi. Well, we're not going to see Maverick. He's like, what? Yeah, yeah, we will. We'll see the captain. Yeah, that guy that bleeds green, that guy that is every bit a Spartan. They could not move him an inch on that run. I think it's Maverick. That'll be tough. Second down, nine. Gabriel climbing the pocket and throwing far side Tez Johnson hopping into his run See we've seen tag that was hopscotch and He 
have seen this now for three weeks, and it is just this protection. I mean, it is so different than the Boise State, the Idaho, and that, granted, is a three-man rush, a little bit of a disguise early. They bail out of it. Dylan, so much more room to operate than the first couple weeks of the season, and that guy doesn't need much room to make a difference. Six of his eight catches have gone for a first down tonight. Jordan James running right into that defense of Michigan State. And that will be all for the third quarter. Very often. There is just some hex on their tight end score and touchdown. They cannot do it this year. After 10 as a group and him individually six last season for Will Stein. Can we believe, by the way, that Shout only got to number 47 on the billboard charts the year it came out? How? Gabriel, all in the middle. More catch and run, and that's going to be short for Tez Johnson. He wants the first down, but he'll be about a yard shot. You going? What do you need to see the field goal operation again? Is water wet? <laughs> yeah, I'm going. It doesn't rain here. I don't have any answer for you. <laughs> no, I'm going. And Dan Lanny, you could see him right there. He just got one more, but that was a little bit of the Tyler Lockett. The Tez was talking to us about a guy that he studies who does understand there's times to take on a bunch of contact and time to also get down. Jordan James trudging forward, driving the legs. First down, Oregon. And then some. That became rugby. Now watch these two, man. Watch Lala Ula. Watch Poncho and his buddy Struther next to him. Look at the movement right here. This double team. A double team, and bam! I'm knocking you three yards backwards. Connerly drives his feet. They have found a little something in Poncho at center. They, they, it took a little while after JPJ left. And there's a big void at center, but they have found it with all 325 pounds. Poncho and his buddy Struther next to him. Well done. He and Dylan Gabriel knew each other from Hawaii a little bit as Gabriel throws to the end zone. He wanted to get it to Ferguson, and a marker comes in. Who tackled who? It was Spencer and Ferguson. Pass interference. Defense, number 43. There's your answer. That foul occurred in the end zone. The ball is played on the two yard line. Automatic. First down. Here's 6'5, 250 on 6'1, 200. And yep, that's all Spencer can do. He initiates all that contact. And once again, they're trying so hard to get Josh tight end to record is safe. <laughs> that's. <laughs> Race back in as the fullback. They'll run it, James. Bouncing outside. James is tripped up. Down he goes. It'll be second and goal coming up. Nice job by Aaron Alexander, a backup linebacker, 33, right there in your picture. Getting off of and shedding that block and then finally getting to those legs. Is this the play where the tight end scores the touchdown? Well, you can shotgunning that little, like, forward pass, little jet sweep, you know, that somehow counts as a pass. You'd want it if you were playing quarterback. There's Ferguson right there, tight to the formation. Call timeout. Timeout, Michigan State. What will Will Stein dial up when we come back? And keep on wishing. Football is sponsored by Pacific Life, creating financial security for nearly 160 years. This is a beautiful place, the Willamette River, the covered bridges all over the Pacific Northwest here in Lane County, and the beautiful site, the beacon that is Autzen Stadium, with an Oregon team that looks mighty dangerous right now. And as much as we've talked about this run game, Jason, and this offensive line, and this defensive tape for Chip Kelly to dig into and Ryan Day for next week, it's going to be pretty intimidating in this building. Second and goal for Oregon. James right into the pile, and they'll blow it dead at the one. Third and goal for Oregon. 
Well, the yards per carry coming down a little bit in the second half. Right. Down to seven and three tenths, Brock. Whatever will he do? That is a long play call. Yeah, uh huh? That is usually a check with me. You can see him. He's probably feeding him a bunch of information, too, before that communication cuts off at 15. James goes down. Michigan State stout defensively there. Ruquan Buckley was in on the tackle fourth down. Yeah, it's a nice job by these two guys right in the middle. We showed earlier about them getting bumped off their spot, but that time, one of the rare occasions, Buckley gets underneath the pass and resets that line of scrimmage as he comes off the field. Job well done, forcing the fourth down. Weapons everywhere. Empty set. Motion from James. The throw right into the hands of Tez Johnson for a walk in. It is just so hard. It is so hard once you see the motion across. Look at the defenders. They just are frozen just for that half second. You can see these two right here. They're just pausing, right? Their eyes just looking into the backfield, that eye candy. The offensive coordinators want that defense to eat, and D coordinators want them to avoid. And then you give a half of a beat of a second to Tez Johnson, and he will make you pay. The all-time single-season reception leader in Oregon history with his near 90 last year has another touchdown on a 15-play drive that soaked up more than eight minutes. A wide menu for Dylan Gabriel. In college football. They play the best music. I mean, everything you want, whatever you want. You want CCNR, you want 70s, you want rock. Yeah, I mean, whatever it is. And, and just the sound, the sound system is phenomenal. You're not adding on. Trying to get me in trouble? No, I'm totally down. I agree with you on it. It's an event. You said it's like a concert as this ends up in the end zone. It was not controlled, so you'll take the touchback. More on that in a second as we take a look at our Friday night spotlight sponsored by KFC. It's finger licking good. Well, Jordan Birch has been just about anywhere and everywhere. Two and a half sacks, that now gives him five on the season. He is smooth. You're just not supposed to be able to move like this when you're 6'5", 290. And honestly, it's why a lot of the NFL folks, GMs, were here tonight because he's one of those game wreckers. And when that engine is revving and he is full go, he's nearly unblockable. Double figure NFL teams represented here. There is a throw and it's incomplete from Childs. To your point about the music, this is also the only place that I recall the head coach has used the sound system mm. as like psychological warfare. Dan Lanning last year used the uh, Motown hit Nowhere to Run To to try to signal to his team that this was their house to close games against USC and Oregon State. I don't remember another nope. coach using the music as a motivational tool. So you always got to be on the lookout, possibly. Second down, it's a throw for Childs. He's got a completion. It's Foster crawling for uh, close to the first down. There's He's also complete. one, Jason, that has a theme every week, and that's not terribly unique. I think a lot of coaches go about that, but he spends time in the offseason, right, really planning and working with others. Hey, man, each week, and it was Friday Night Lights this week, and they showed Permian High School, right, and they showed clips of that movie because they knew that was going to be some of the theme of having the whole national audience under these lights. Kind of like many of them played in high school a year, two, three, four, six years ago in some cases. Giles rolling to his right. Throwing to his right, there's a marker in, and this is eventually caught by Foster. He did take it to the ground with him. If it stands, it's a 35-yard gain. Yeah, that's going to be a hold on the back end against Oregon, I believe, or pass interference. This should stand. 
You asked Dan Lanning about his high school days. Holding. Holding. Defense. Number 11. number 11. That penalty is declined. Result of the play is a first down. Defensive end, tight end. Back in the day, you can see it, right? With Dan. Demeter. Oh yeah. Yep. Small town guy. Smaller college football appreciates everything. Is. I thought Allison laid out beautifully in the story about his wife Sophia and her battle. Dan does a great job of not making it about Dan Lennon. And that's not easy to do playing for this brand, coaching for this brand. When you have to recruit to yourself as a coach, Childs off the screen. He's got Bella who breaks the tackle and ends up at the 20. Allison downstairs. Well, one thing Dan Lanning has really done as a head coach is embrace the mental aspect of this and leaned into, like, the psychology of guys. He brings in a sports psychologist, Corey Schaefer, who we met back at Georgia to, to help come up with the themes and the motivations for each week. And one of the big things that during the bye week was this idea of slow-cooked meals being the best meals. You know, we're in this microwave society. Everything wants, everybody wants instant returns, instant gratification. You have to work for it and continually get better. Best meals, no, no arguing, right? They're the slow cook ones. It's true. Thank you, Allison. Play action for Childs. He'll throw. He's got Belling again, and Michigan State has a first and goal. I know defensive coaches as well, and that shot of Tosh Lapoy and Dan Lanning, you know what they want? Zero. Those are hard to come by. Really hard to come by because it takes 60 minutes and Tosh is looking at that play script and there's some backups in there. There's some depth in there. There's no birch on this drive, but no matter who you are, you know they want to see that goose egg. Especially with how they talked about closing the game against Oregon State last year to end the regular season. A similar team here in Michigan State. And coaching staff. This run gets them to the goal line. And they're going to say he's out of bounds. There's a marker in as well. So Lynch Adams to the one on the run. Personal foul. Illegal block below the waist. Defense, number 19. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Automatic first down. It's Tyler Turner, the freshman. Yeah, and this is this is the right call, and they have tried to eliminate this move with this penalty. You know, 10, 15 years ago, defensive players go could go to the legs of linemen and tight ends and bigger guys out on the perimeter, and that is just not the case. Trying to protect as you're gonna see Belling come in motion here. And Turner goes right towards those knees. And Adams is in to the end zone. Michigan State makes sure it won't be a shutout in their first Big Ten visit to Watson Stadium. Yeah, just a power football right here. Block down, block down, pull around. Fullback leads. And a nice drive there for Michigan State. A couple of tailbacks here for the Spartans who have come from smaller programs from UConn and UMass. A former UMass Minuteman, Tehran Lynch Adams. I'll tell you this, man. Jonathan Smith's guys play hard. Yeah. Some of the speed deficiencies, some of the size challenges up front, some of the. Just inconsistencies with a young quarterback, but you cannot question how hard these Spartans have tried to play tonight. Anything to add? Well, I, I did not know how many people had cover bridges on their bingo card tonight, but that is awesome. It's Kudos to BZ here. and Hembo for yep. those shots as well. They went out and got the car and took video of all the covered bridges we could find. And this has been anything but an antique Oregon effort. This has been powerful. Yeah, and most of those yards from Jordan in the first half, been a little tougher to come by in the second half. Tez has just been, well, Tez, that's about what he does every single game. And Dylan Gabriel flushed those early interceptions in the red zone and much more efficient. Gabriel's night is done, it looks like. Dante Moore is into the ball game and he so far this year has thrown all of three passes and he gets some valuable experience in a big 10 game 
Just as low in motion. Jaden Lamar, the tailback, and he is thrilled by Quindarius Dunnigan. We should say that over the past quarter and a half or so, two quarters as a marker comes in. Couple markers. You have been, with the help of your new friend Nick, tracking Dylan Gabriel's release time over the course of this game. Yes, I have. One of the big themes coming into it, and in which I have a Will Stein about it, was time. Right? The, the amount of time Dylan has that ball in his hand and gets it out of his hands. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense, number 81. The tap of this is the goal for the succeeding spot. The down counts. It's second down. It's a defense. Correction. Correction. Offense, number 81. Yeah, it's against the Oregon Ducks. There you go. It's on Ryan Pollock, the wide receiver. So what did you learn tonight about Gabriel and his release time? Well, the, the, the goal is 2.5 for Will Stein, right? And the average tonight has been just about that, 2.585. And now we have seen some shots. We have seen some different plays. A 2.428 the last two drives. But there is not a detail that is missed here in this program. Yeah. I think that's one of the biggest points we've learned covering in the last few years. More to throw. He gets it to Jurion Dickey, the freshman, with his first catch. The redshirt freshman on a Palo Alto. But to be clear, it's Nick's job to track the release time. For Joel yeah, and we, I just grabbed him from the field. I said, I'm sorry, Nick. You're going to have to come up to the booth with me today. Actually, Allison kind of paved the way for me. And, I'm, and he's actually got a stopwatch in his hand. This is what they do at practice, too. 2.5 is the goal. Get the ball out of your hand in 2.5. Get it to your playmakers. Wear out a defense. Right, play to Dylan Gabriel's strength with all those starts under his belt. And it's been a little stop and start tonight. And there's, yeah, there's my buddy Nick right here. Nick? Yep. Who's been kidnapped by Brock Heward. <laughs> yeah. I said, do not move court. out of this corner. <laughs> I'll give you space to do your job. <laughs> but I find it very intriguing. Third down, Dante Moore. On the roll, kept his feet, steps out of a tackle, and he'll make a business decision out of bounds. No, thanks to Nick for, for jumping up here because it, 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 we're doing it because it is a cornerstone of what this offense does. Yeah, and a couple of those picks kind of marred some of that early, right? Because when I watch the tape over the course of this week and prepare, much like, you know, the Ohio State's going to do for Dan Landing, they're going to look at that ball. Out. Well, how do we defend this? Do I blitz this? Do I play coverage against this? You know, the average is less than 2-5. There are many plays, Jason, where it's a second and a half. And just how hard it is to try to defend an offense with this kind of tempo. Luke Dunn back to punt. And we'll get a timeout, Oregon. Timeout, Oregon. As the first of the half. 6.43 to go. We'll take a look at our team comparison sponsored by T-Mobile, America's largest 5G network. 2.15 on the ground. Brock. Pretty awesome. Now, you do look at those numbers, Jason, and I told you at halftime, they were projecting to 700-plus yards of offense. So Michigan State has made it a little harder. I think Oregon's gone fairly vanilla in this second half, playing to some of their depth. But it's going to take four quarters next week. I mean, period, end story. It is Goliath versus Goliath. It is talent versus talent, and it's going to shine like that guy's suit. You think so? This is a crowd that is full of characters as well. Kind of Eugene. I, I love it here. <laughs> <laughs> and you're thinking in your head, of course you do. <laughs> Foster, fair catch. So being on Friday night, there's not a whole lot of games going on around us. And here's some of the notable Big Ten games. Iowa, Ohio State could be a grinder for the Buckeyes. If you think Michigan might have uh, might have a little bit of resistance. Well, I don't just think that. I think there are a lot of people that think that when you look at the in deeper dive into some of the numbers. I mean, Washington has just unfortunately beat themselves on a couple different occasions. And Michigan has just been one-dimensional. And I'll tell you who's done a really nice, sneaky job is Steve Belichick. Jed Fish is higher at defense oh, sure, sure, sure. there in Washington. He has given them a chance each and every week to win. Now the North Dakota transfer, Tommy Schuster is in to play quarterback 
for Michigan State. He's thrown 16 passes all year, and this one is complete to Nick Marsh, the freshman. He was a highly prolific passer at North Dakota, nearly 9,100 pass yards, 843 completions, a school record in those categories and touchdown passes. He came back home, essentially, to play one year at Michigan State. Yeah, he's played a lot of ball. I'm catching up with Ling Brian Lindgren on the field before the game. I said, much change if he goes in? He said, no. This guy's got a ton of background and experience. And just a little baller. Was 14 for 14 in a state title game at one point in high school. He had the Jared Goff game in a Michigan State title game. And this Michigan State defense, you said it a couple times, they, they held the line as much as they could today. They could. I mean, they just did not get much help offensively in that first half. Gave up way too many explosive plays, especially in that run game. But some adjustments into the second half, tightened up some of those running lanes, made it a little more difficult. But just not enough firepower throughout. Do have a bye week coming up, so they get an extra day. It's a 15-day hiatus. As on the reach, Lynch Adams will go down. He's not going to get there as Soli made the stop. The senior transfer from Arizona State and Oregon getting some run. They, you know, they have had the one big win against Oregon State and they ran UCLA last week, but there hasn't been a ton of time to get backups to yep. burn. So Justin Jacobs, the senior linebacker in. Fourth and one for Schuster in this offense. He'll roll to his right. Schuster has to break it down. Jacobs made him do it. Now he's got all sorts of space and sliding for a first down in front of Woodyard. And that just strikes me as a guy that's kind of been there and done it and seen it all. I mean, a six-year senior transfer, a little play action there, and the game just... Doesn't speed up. Birch and the guys have a little fun because they know that backside pursuit's going to get yelled at in the meetings and in the tape. But great awareness there from Schuster. Nowhere to go. Could feel the rush over pursuing and converts on fourth. Play action. Schuster. Throwing, sideline ball, and a nice comeback and a catch by Velling, who's been really important to this offense. His fifth catch to lead the team. That one goes for 20. Yeah, and he was the second leading receiver coming into this game tonight. Very prolific a year ago. Eight touchdowns himself as a Beaver. Ooh, does he secure it all the way through? <laughs> Close. He's stopping it. I'm not stopping it. Are you stopping it? I don't have that power. Schuster flicks it out wide, and eventually that play will stop. Nate Carter out of the backfield. Boy, wanting to see his guys finish. I think a few other folks out there wanting to see how the final 240 finishes. Interested parties. Oregon has been known for its offensive inventiveness. Mm -hmm. Tosh McCoy has created a defense that feels like week to week. He's very comfortable with their improvement in specific areas week to week as this will go for a first down. Lynch Adams on the run. He is, and he also talked to us about, what was that, the Havoc rate? The Havoc rate, yeah. And I think you talked to somebody in the NFL about that today as well, possibly. And that's a number that defensive guys like to look at. How much Havoc are you creating? How much difficulty are you making on that offense? Look at you, company man, promoting our NFL single header coming up with the Commanders at Browns on Sunday. Here on Friday night, all oh, Oregon. And Oregon's on the way to 5-0. Oh, Michigan State 
And a fall to three and three as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary sponsored by Pacific Life. Creating financial security for nearly 160 years. Well, there were a bunch of splash plays in that first half. Dylan Gabriel showing off some of the athleticism. We saw him at Oregon State put on the Jets as well. You call that flip nine right there. Terrific timing with the motion, getting Jordan James into some space. This was a gorgeous throw. A touchdown there to Evan Stewart. I think you said it before that snap. Just a plethora of different choices on that menu. Which weapon you want to go to and ultimately test scoring yet again. That touchdown was the perfect example. You got two guys in motion and then one yeah. sets and the other one comes across. What do you do? I mean, you got run game, you got QB run game, you got three elite receivers, you got three tight ends, you got Jordan Birch wreaking havoc with a couple sacks tonight defensively as well. And honestly, that's why they're the number six team in the country, and they'll be welcoming in a team equally, if not maybe even just a little more talented in spots than them next weekend. Yeah, I wonder if you're going to pick the 22 starters for that game, how many Ducks and how many Buckeyes you would have as Schuster throws out wide and Belling makes a catch. That's a game you like to play every once in a while. I do. How many Ducks, how many Buckeyes would start combining those teams? Yeah, I mean, just off the top of my head, I think it's going to be pretty darn split. Yeah. Honestly. I mean, I think it's going to be really hard to pick between the quarterbacks and the running backs and the tight ends and the receivers. And the, I mean, you just go through it all, and it's probably pretty darn close to 50 50. I mean, if you're allowed to pick the room, right, you might pick one from each at the running back spot. Second down, Schuster, free runner, look out. He got away for a moment, then ran right back into it, and eventually he's going to go down. Blake Purchase actually made three transactions there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the sophomore right here from Cherry Creek High School out in Denver, Colorado, is a big physical athletic guy. That was number one, that was number two, and then I'm just going to continue the effort as an angry highlighter and find a way to get home. Play for the great Dave Logan out there. I'll say this, if it's 11-11 for players, Jason, you know and I know, the horseshoe is at least a player advantage, and Autzen Stadium the same way. I also talked about slow-cooked meals. This home-cooked meal is a difficult one to swallow for visiting teams here at Autzen Stadium. And for the Oregon Ducks, they have another short week coming up. After the Buckeye game, they'll play Purdue on a Friday night. And still a trip to Michigan and a trip to Camp Randall, along with that Washington game that gave fits. Yeah, but an extra day to prepare for Ohio State is the Buckeyes will play a physical Iowa team. And Illinois is physical. Michigan is physical. The depth is going to be tested in this Big Ten over the course of the year. Jonathan Kim is perfect this year. Eight for eight. This field goal is good. There is a marker down. And even more interested parties in that marker. To see Tasha's reaction. Ten. Running to the, Run kicker. the kicker. Defense. 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 That penalty is declined. The field goal is good. 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 Great effort here from 11 Kim Alexander. Flying off the edge, but you just can't get into the legs. Miss, miss, go left. Miss, miss, go left. <laughs> Downstairs, Allison. Well, guys, before we go, if you'll remember, I told you earlier that everyone in the Lanning family had uh, their hand in the designs we saw tonight. One of the designs Dan Lanning wanted to incorporate was the molecular pattern for the chemotherapy treatment known as the Red Devil. It's the absolutely worst of all of them. His wife had to endure it during her, her, her treatment, and so did Ty DePauli. He was 17 years old. You see him there. He was, he was diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma, and he has been going through chemo on and off since then. Dan Lanning got word of his story. He has brought him into this program, embraced him, and it brought him around this team as much as he can, which you can imagine means a ton to Ty. He is a, a high school football kicker. He coaches a football team here locally still, the kickers, and it has meant so much to him to be embraced by this program as he continues his fight against cancer. 
Beautiful once again, Allison. And I'll just say what I said earlier. There's just something unique about sport and what it can do in community. And then when you have an environment like this and in a town like this, people like Dan Lanning and his beautiful wife and family that just want to embrace this challenge that has touched just about everybody in this battle with cancer. It's bigger than football. By a mile. And to see young people going through it, yep. it puts you right in the heart. Oregon in these uniforms designed by the Lanning family has put together an extremely complete effort tonight to thrill the fans 31 10 your final score and for the second straight year the Oregon Ducks go to 5 and 0. Oh. Allison with Dan Lanning. Coach Lanning, what a performance. I want to start on the offensive side. What led to the success you guys had running the ball tonight? I think it's just that, like playing playing physical and, and making sure that we're going to emphasize running the ball. So we, we took away some decision making and said, let's just run it. You told me at the half your quarterback, Dylan Gabriel, is a stud. How would you describe the way he responded to some adversity tonight? He's a stud, right? A quarterback in college football, you're going to face some adversity, right? He experienced a little bit of that today, right? You know, we got to be able to react, uh, you know, play to that, adjust to it, and those moments happen, but he stepped up tonight. What stood out to you the most defensively? Yeah, our ability to stop the run, right? We were able to run the ball. They weren't able to run the ball. I think that's going to create a lot of success. You have instilled so many important principles in this team and this program on a night where they are wearing these jerseys to stop out cancer. What are you most proud of? Yeah, just that. Uh, this night meant a little bit more to a lot of us, and, you know, I, I don't, I don't, it never needs to be bigger than the game, but there's a lot of things bigger than football. And to be able to have, you know, cancer awareness supported tonight it was really special. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you. That's smart.